Hello, everybody! Welcome to another episode of Find Out What's in Polenta's Forest. I am Polenta, and this is my forest. Welcome to my show! Remember, <coughs> excuse me, everything you hear on my show may or may not be true. So do not be an armchair warrior. Check your facts and do your own research. And on that note, grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. Tonight's music lineup is Tina Turner, Simply the Best, Confunction, Get Up on the Downstroke, The Gap Band, Burn Rubber, and right now, the Gap Band is going to bring us on in with the party train, and then we'll be right back with some real news. To get your ticket, hurry, don't you miss it. Everybody's got to stand in line to be sure that you to, to be right on time. Everybody, come aboard. Everybody, come aboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me stop. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. Let me calm down. Get a little carried away here. All right. So we're going to start the evening off with some real news. The Coast Guard rescues a Florida man from an unsuccessful bubble journey to Bermuda. Let's see, Pompano Beach, Florida, the U.S. Coast Guard retrieved an endurance runner after he ended his aquatic voyage from South Florida to the Bermuda Triangle in his hydropod early Sunday, April 24, 2016. It was the second failed attempt, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right or not, but it was the second failed attempt for Reza Bellucci, an Iranian-born man who lives in Pompano Beach. His planned five-month trip started on Friday the 22nd, in Pompano Beach. The Coast Guard had warned Bellucci, 44, that he was not authorized to depart on his journey because his vessel and water conditions were unsafe. <clears throat> now check this out. The penalty was a seven year confinement and a $40,000 fine. Now he was rescued back in 2014 when his GPS device fell into the ocean. But you know what <laughs> the trip about all this is? He received a warning letter from Captain A.J. Gould about future and unsafe, you know, voyages being terminated. Well, he was rescued back in 2014, and then he just got rescued again. You know, I don't understand. Well, why don't people listen? Who pays for this? Our taxes? Do our taxes pay for it? And when people get fined, these great big huge fines, do those fines ever get paid? Who pays for those fines? And in the article that they wrote about this, he stated that he's a peaceful man, he's a lover, not a fighter, and he doesn't want any drama, you know, with, uh, with the Coast Guard. Well, if he would stop getting lost and broke down and losing his GPS, there would be no dang drama, okay? Moving right along. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, oh, this is really, oh, this is super, super cool. You've got to go on YouTube and Google search this and check this out. This is really awesome. British astronaut runs 26-mile marathon from space. Check this out. British astronaut breaks record with London marathon run from space. Hailing from the UK, Tim Peake has claimed a Guinness World Record by completing the fastest marathon in orbit. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the British astronaut finished the race 
in three hours and 35 minutes. You know how fast he was running? I did a marathon. Well, I did a half marathon in uh, 2010. It took me three hours and 18 minutes. Oh, well, mind you, I didn't run the whole thing. I mean, I, I ran some of it and I walked some of it, okay? But it took me three hours and 18 minutes. Anyway, here on Earth, uh, Jamima Sumgong became the 2016 women's champion. Two hours and 22 minutes. That woman was, her legs were moving, okay? And Ilya Kipjong claimed the men's title with two hours and three minutes. Dang, talk about people being in good shape. 26 miles. That is some fast, fast moving, okay? Well, I hope you can see this. I'm going to have to do something about these pictures, but check this out. This is some really cool art. Now, Kenny Irwin Jr. of Palm Springs, he created this and other of these bots from recycled material such as TV screens, computer monitors, and appliances. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but that is really, really cool. These are just big giant robots and artifacts and stuff that he is, you know, made out of, just out of junk and recycled stuff. And let's see here. Oh, here's a strange, here's a strange law fact. So let me actually, let me just ask you a question. Let me do a little, little scenario here. Hey, I have a, a really cool idea. You want to get married? Yeah? I bet you will after about 10 shots of tequila. Well, it's not going to happen. You know why? Because in Pennsylvania, ministers are forbidden from performing marriages if either the bride or the groom is intoxicated. Isn't that a trip? Now, <laughs> well, that would put Vegas out of business, huh? Because I think everybody that goes to Vegas, well, I shouldn't say everybody that goes to Vegas, but what is, what is just the stupid things that people usually do when you're drunk or just super wasted? Why is it that when people are super wasted, the first thing they want to do is get married? It's like, oh, oh man, I'm super drunk. Are you drunk? Yeah, I'm drunk. Yeah, you're drunk? Yeah, I'm drunk. Or we're both drunk? Yeah, we're both drunk. You want to go get married? Yeah, let's go get married. We can get it annul the next day. We're drunk. Let's go get married. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Here is some interesting facts about the Arizona Meteor. This is a cool article that was in the Sacramento Bee, California Traveler, talking about pit stops. The Arizona Meteor and Death Valley's Ubehebe are two of the greatest craters of the American Southwest. Looking at them, you might think they're twins, but the Meteor Crater in Arizona and the Ubehebe Crater in Death Valley National Park are mere cousins in terms of geology. The former, thanks to a 26,000 mile per hour meteorite went from flat terrain to a 600 foot hole three quarters of a mile in diameter in about 10 seconds can you imagine that in 10 seconds Psh, tell you what if you would happen to be anywhere in that area you wouldn't even know you were dead yet you would just be dust you'd still be floating around in the atmosphere <laughs> And the latter was born in comparably quick fashion by magma heated, exploding upward stream. Isn't that a trip? The two arguably represent the most scenic and accessible craters in the America Southwest. So once again, don't know if you could see that or not, but that's something else cool that you could research, um, you know, that you could research online. That's pretty neat. So, let's see. Here is something uh, pretty funny. <laughs> you can find this on YouTube also. It's pretty neat. Llamas on the loose. So, two llamas. Actually, this is the full story. Because people just saw the llamas, you know, running around loose. And everybody was cracking up laughing. And it was just a great big deal. But, the whole story behind the llamas on the loose is, in fact... 
that the two llamas were being taken to visit a former llama rancher at an assisted living facility for animal therapy. But see, there were actually three llamas in the trailer. When the door opened, two of them decided to bolt out, and then the chase was on. But for some reason, I guess the third llama, he decided, I don't know why he didn't run, but maybe he was just tired. <laughs> maybe he was taking a break. You know, maybe the other two said, hey, hey, Charlie, we're going to make a run for it. You want to come? And he said, you know, you guys are stupid. I'm just going to sit here and just chill out. <laughs> okay, moving right along here. Well, here is a bit of good news. Women are allowed to vote for the first time in Saudi Arabia. And NWA. Wow, here's some good news. NWA entered the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on Friday, April 8th, 2016 with the groundbreaking quintet that reflected the rough streets of Los Angeles in a style known as gangster rap, defiantly refuting those who suggested rappers didn't belong in the institution. Well, guess what? They're there now. Good job. Congratulations. I think that is absolutely fabulous. Oh, and also... Kelly Clarkson just gave birth to a baby boy. So congratulations, Kelly Clarkson. And I know <laughs> that this is super, super corny when I'm getting ready to do. And it's super late. But I love this woman. I love her music. I loved her at the Kennedy Honors when she did one of Carol King's songs and everybody went crazy. Obama's and Michelle Obama were there and Lily Tomlin and oh, it was just absolutely amazing. But anyway, I know it's April and her birthday was actually March 25th, but I just want to say a happy belated birthday to Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Here she is with some of her friends and I know it's late, but happy birthday, happy birthday. And let's see, on that note, that is going to be the end of our show for today. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you spending your time with me. I am so, 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 so very grateful. You can follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. You can go to my website, polintaarforest.com. Buy my book, Angels Passing Through. You will love it and god bless you all what else i can't think of anything else and i dropped the rest of my cue cards on the floor so if there was anything else <laughs> that i was supposed to say i can't remember carlos santana is going to take us out with europa earth's cry heaven smile stay strong stay positive oh yeah that's what i was going to say you have any suggestions comments my email's down there. Send me an email. I will answer you, and I might even read it on the air. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you next time. God bless you all. Stay strong. Bye.